Welcome to an introduction to data sufficiency questions. In this lesson, we'll examine the structure of this unique question type and the five answer choices that always accompany these questions. Now, approximately 40% of the questions you will encounter in the quantitative section of the GMAT will be data sufficiency questions. These questions test your ability to analyze a quantitative question, determine whether certain information is relevant to a given problem, and determine whether certain information is sufficient to solve a problem. Let's take a look at a typical data sufficiency question. First, we have a target question. Now, the target question on its own will never contain enough information to answer. In this particular case, it's obvious that we cannot say what the value of x is since we have no information. Next, we have two statements, statement 1 and statement 2. These statements may or may not provide the information required to answer the target question. Finally, we have five answer choices. These answer choices are the same for each and every data sufficiency question, so be sure to become very familiar with them. Now, on the day of your test, you will have five radio buttons, and you must select one of them for each question. You will find, however, that most GMAT resources will label these options from A to E in order to refer to each of them. That's what we'll do here. Now, the five answer choices are all related to whether or not each of the two statements provides enough information to answer the target question. So, you will select answer choice A if statement 1 alone provides sufficient information to answer the target question, but statement 2 alone does not provide sufficient information to answer the target question. You will select answer choice B if statement 2 alone is sufficient, but statement 1 alone is not. Select answer choice C if statements 1 and 2 together are sufficient, but neither statement alone is sufficient. Select answer choice D if each statement alone is sufficient. And select answer choice E if statements 1 and 2 together are not sufficient. Now let's answer this particular question. The target question asks us to find the value of x. We'll begin with statement 1, which tells us that x is less than 10. Does statement 1 provide sufficient information to answer the target question? In other words, does this statement provide sufficient information to definitively, without a doubt, answer the target question? The answer is no. Statement 1 tells us that x can equal any number less than 10. So x might equal 8, or it might equal 2, or 3.7, and so on. Since statement 1 does not provide sufficient information to answer the target question, we will say that this statement is insufficient. What about statement 2, which tells us that 2x equals 6? Does this statement provide sufficient information to answer the target question? The answer is yes. If we know that 2x equals 6, then x must equal 3, which means we can definitely determine the value of x. Since statement 2 does provide sufficient information to answer the target question, we will say that this statement is sufficient. So, statement 1 does not provide sufficient information, but statement 2 does provide sufficient information. This means the answer to our question is B, which says statement 2 alone is sufficient, but statement 1 alone is not sufficient. Now let's try another question. This question is very similar to the last question, except statements 1 and 2 have been reversed. Beginning with statement 1, we'll ask our question, does this statement provide sufficient information to definitively answer the target question? The answer here is yes, so statement 1 is sufficient. Now on to statement 2. Is this information sufficient to answer the target question? The answer is no, so we say that it is insufficient. In this case, the correct answer is A, which says that statement 1 alone is sufficient, but statement 2 alone is not sufficient. Here's another question. The target question here still requires us to find the value of x. We'll begin with statement 1. Does this statement provide sufficient information to definitively answer the target question? The answer is yes, so statement 1 is sufficient. Now on to statement 2. Is this information sufficient to answer the target question? 
The answer is yes. We can see that if x plus 2 equals 5, then x must equal 3. So we can see that statement 2 is sufficient. Now in this case, the answer is D, which says that each statement alone is sufficient. Another question. Here the target question asks us to find Quan's age. We'll begin with statement 1. Quan is 2 years older than Olympia. Does this statement provide sufficient information to answer the target question? The answer is no. Using statement 1 alone, we cannot determine Quan's age, so statement 1 is insufficient. Now on to statement 2. Olympia is 31 years old. Does this statement alone provide enough information to answer the target question? No, it does not, so statement 2 is insufficient. Now when we have the case where neither statement alone is sufficient, we need to examine both statements combined. If we combine the two statements, we know that Quan is 2 years older than Olympia, and we know that Olympia is 31 years old. Do the two statements combined provide enough information to answer the target question? The answer is yes. Using both statements, we can conclude that Quan must be 33 years old. So statements 1 and 2 combined are sufficient. In this case, the correct answer is C, which says that both statements together are sufficient, but neither statement alone is sufficient. One last question. The target question here is the same as the last example. Beginning with statement 1, we can see that it does not provide enough information to determine Quan's age, so it is insufficient. When we examine statement 2, we see that it is also insufficient. When we have a case where neither statement alone is sufficient, we must examine both statements combined. If we combine the two statements, we know that Quan is 2 years older than Olympia, and we know that Olympia is three years older than Diego. Do the two statements combined provide enough information to answer the target question? The answer is no. Even combined, the two statements are not sufficient to determine Quan's age. So the correct answer to this question is E, which says that both statements together are not sufficient. So that concludes our introduction to data sufficiency questions. This question type may seem a little strange when you first start out, but with time, you will be mastering them with ease. Just remember that the first step towards mastery is memorizing the five answer choices.